go ahead and open your Bibles over to, uh, you can go on over to John, chapter 10. We're going to pick up from this morning. We're talking about God's divine protection. We kind of were talking about the different characteristics, that it was continuous, it was unfailing, it was assuring. Uh, we want to get to um, the next one and then move into what, um, what it's provided against. In other words, what it is, you know, the characteristics, and then what it's against. Amen. So looking over in John chapter 10, hallelujah, we'll receive the offering at the end of the service, make any announcements we need to make, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God. It says here in John 10, 29, the next characteristic, the fourth characteristic, we have three, continuous, unfailing, and assuring. Next one is preserving. And Jesus says in John 10, 29, and 30, he says, My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. In other words, you can't pluck it out of Jesus' hand either. Amen. But notice here he says, you know, now listen, no man can pluck them out. Some people use that to say, you can never, you, I said, you're going to heaven no matter what, doesn't matter anything, you're eternally secure. Well, that's not what he said. So no man can pluck them out of his hand. In other words, you, you can't be, you know, the enemy can't come in and pluck you out of the Father's hand. Amen? Now, G, G, uh, Paul wrote in the book of Hebrews and said, if you count the blood of the covenant, whereof you have sanctified an unholy thing, then remain no more sacrifice for sin. So that's a whole other thing. But I'm talking about the, the, the enemy can't come in and steal you out of the Father's hand. He can't come in and you just, you know, you're serving God one minute, and the enemy can come, ah, I got you, and steal you. Calls, you know, God's not going to fumble you on the, the three-yard line like D'Angelo did in the second game of the year. Ah, well, we won't talk about that. Hallelujah. All right. Somebody, I'm still upset over it. Anyway, hallelujah. <clears throat> no, the, father, the Father's not going to fumble you. You're not, not going to get plucked out of his hand. Hallelujah. His, his, uh, his protection is preserving. He will preserve you. I thank God for his preservation. I thank God. Now, let me say that. I'm going to say this. It also works on other arenas of life, too. Now, uh, if you'll notice, people who serve the Lord and serve him, serve him um, with all their heart and, and serve and go to church, they don't get old like, uh, as quick as other folks get. I'm just telling you. You go find you some folks been out doing drugs and drinking and running hard, and at, 20, at 30, 35 years old, they look like they're 60. Hello? Then you get around, you get my age, and people think you're still in your, your late 30s and early 40s. I'm not. I'm double nickels. That's 55 in case you can't figure that out. <laughs> I'm not 10. I'm double nickels. Five, five. Hallelujah. I, I remember when I, a lot of times I'll substitute at Wesley, and the kids will say, Mr. Taylor, how old are you? I say, uh, 55, or back then, 54? No, you don't look that well. Yeah, I am. How old do you think I was? I thought you were 38 or 40, 42, something like that. No, I'm 55, 54. You know, what? Well, God, that preserves you. The, the life of God will preserve you. His protection in your life is a preservation factor. Amen? Aren't you glad? Amen? I got relatives that are younger than me that lived hard when they were young, and they're old. They look older than me. They're, I mean, six, seven years younger than me. Sin will mess you up. Sin will make you old. Hello. Amen. But you know, between God's preservation and hair dye, you can look younger. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. So God, God says here, you're, he's, he'll preserve you. You're not going to be taken out of his hand. Now look. So we have the four characteristics. It's, it's continuous. It's unfailing. It's assuring and it's preserving. Now let's look at the, what the, God gives us protection against. Let's first of all, evil. Look over in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and in verse 3. 2 Thess 3, 3. All right? But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Now we, we, set, we laid down uh, this morning in our first thing was that when we're talking about how that and, this, and when God's protection being continuous, how the psalmist says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my salvation, my help cometh to the Lord. There's a, we, we predicate things we're saying on the fact we're looking to the Lord. In other words, we're serving God. We're, <clears throat> he that dwelleth in the secret place of the, of the Almighty shall abide under the shadow of, of him. Amen? There's an abiding. There's a looking to. You, can't, you don't forego those principles 
You know, some people teach us some stuff on, you know, uh, misteaching the subject of grace, running around saying things like, you know, oh, it don't matter what I do, I'm under grace and God's going to do it. Well, see, that's, that's misapplication of a truth. You know, God's grace works in your behalf, but you just can't do whatever you want to do and expect it to work. You, there are things that God's word requires of you. <clears throat> and so if you want his protection, you're looking to him. Amen. You don't run out in the middle of the interstate and say, well, it doesn't matter, I'm, I'm covered by God's grace. You're going to be covering the hood of a tractor trailer in a minute if you don't get out of the road. Are you here? I mean, you'll be the infamous Ed ornament on the hood of a Mack truck running down the road. It'd be something like this. Y'all did get that, right? No? Is it too early in the evening? How many just woke up and came to church and you're still asleep? How many love Jesus? How many are here? How many are going, amen, when I say something? Thank you. All right. So God, but see, God is faithful who will establish you and keep you from evil. You can trust his protection to keep you from evil. Now, you can't go hunting evil down. Amen? You can't, you can't be going into the bars, into the strip clubs, and all those places and expect not to, not to have evil mess with you. But I tell you what, you, when you walk in with God, he'll protect you from evil. Evil will, evil will try to show up, but you just keep walking with the Lord. You keep walking in his protection. You keep walking in his love. He'll protect you. Isn't that good to know? I, I, listen, we, I, I always have a hard time preaching some things without at least giving the other side of it. that you, you know, You've got to walk with God. You've got to do your part. But if you'll do your part of just looking to him and keeping faithful to those things, his, his protection will protect you. He'll keep you. Now, um, years ago we had a lady in the church and uh, she used to leave her purse in her car with the doors, windows down and doors unlocked. I think ultimately something happened, something got stolen, or it got stolen, or something got stolen. See, see that's not smart. We had, I remember when, when Jamie and I were back in Greenville at, at Faith and Victory Church in Greenville, we had, we had some, we had some uh, church folk that, that, that thought they had a hold of faith. And they went over to the Mendenhall Student Center there on the East Carolina campus and set all their books down at the beginning of the semester. And here's the thing. They're just too lazy to haul them around. So they, they, they put them down and put the angels in charge of their books. Angels, watch over my books in Jesus' name. And they just went off for a couple hours, did whatever they wanted to do. And when they got back, guess what? Angels weren't there either. Hello? Books were all gone. And she came in and in a, in a church service on, on a Wednesday night or something, and, and the, the, the mom and wanted to stand the pastor down as to why God didn't stop, stop those books from being stolen. Let me tell you why. Because it was God's responsibility to watch over them books. It was hers. Hello. Now, had she had her books, and somebody kind of take it out of her arms, God could have protect, would have protected her from evil. Amen. But now they just... We'll leave them right there and just put the angels in charge. That's not smart. That's not Bible. All right? So we don't do foolish things. But on the other hand of it, if you're walking with the Lord and you're just, you keep fellowship with him, when evil comes, he'll protect you. Now, our pastors, the church that we're out of, out of Greenville, our pastor's wife had, um, was, was at one point in time, she was going to Christ for the Nations, Gordon Lindsay School. And they had a guest speaker come one day. <clears throat> and he preached on the 91st Psalm. And he talked about how you're covered, you know, he'll cover you with his feathers. And so they left class that day, and, they were going, and one of the girls was walking down the street. Apparently the school, I don't know if it was the school was in a bad part of town, or she lived in a bad part or whatever. But she was walking, and this guy pulled up his car right up on the sidewalk, got out and said, get in. And God said, God's word said he'll protect you from evil, he'll keep you from evil. And she just started going, Feathers! I'm covered in feathers! Feathers! I'm covered in feathers! The guy got back in his car and drove off. <laughs> See, she remembered that part. He'll cover you with his feathers. <clears throat> That's now, what, what you can think what you want to think. The guy may have thought she was crazy. Listen, the Lord will make people think you're crazy. Whatever he's got to do to get rid of them. Amen. Feathers! I'm covered in feathers! <laughs> So he didn't want no crazy woman. She wasn't crazy. 
She was quoting the part that she did. I'm covered in feathers. He'll cover thee with his feathers. She knew that she was under the wings of the Almighty. And she was covered with his feathers. Glory to God. He kept her from evil. Because the, obviously the person had no intention but evil. I said he had no intention but evil. Amen? Can you say amen? But she's covered in feathers. He kept her. See, his divine protection will keep you from evil. Amen? I said he'll keep you from evil. Glory to God. Amen? Hallelujah. Now that, he will keep you from temptation. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, folks, again, your side of that is you don't get the Playboy channel in your house and just have it in there and expect God to keep you from temptation. That went over big. Don't want to talk about, people don't want to talk about that kind of stuff. All right, forget it. Showtime. There's enough rot on there to keep you, get you in trouble by itself. Is anybody going to just, are y'all just going to sit there like knots on the log right now? You don't set, you know, we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. Now, let me say this. You need to come to realization you can't trust your flesh no further than you can spit it. Amen. Are you here? You're going home. Now, uh, a number of years ago, this man was telling me, he, you know, he's a minister, and he was telling me about a pastor he knew that this woman came into his office one day and had, just had a coat on. She walked in, had to shut the door, she took the cut off, and she was naked. And he just had her sit down, and he, he kept talking to her, said, maybe you want, you know, eventually talk to her and putting her clothes on and walking back out. And I think, hogwash. I don't, I don't believe it, number one. Number two, that's not what, uh, that's not what uh, Joseph did. I mean, he ran out of the house, and she's grabbing his clothes. Amen? You don't just, you know, you flee evil. Amen? And God will keep you from the temptation. I tell you, whenever you make a step to run from, get away from evil, God will protect you. His protection, his divine protection will keep you. Amen? The, listen to verse 13 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, or that what man deals with, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you raven. Now listen, God sets ground rules. Now, this ought, to be a, this ought to be an encouragement to you. That if something comes and you're thinking, because listen, you hear people talk about, man, I just can't, the devil, the devil's just getting me. I can't, I can't deal with this. I can't overcome this. God said that you're not, that, that he can't, he's not allowed to come against you with something greater than you can deal with. That whatever comes your way, you're already equipped to overcome it. Will not, allow you or not suffer suffer means to allow allow you to be tempted above that which you're able but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that it that you may be able to bear it now listen if, if you got the weymouth if you could throw that up in the weymouth hallelujah i don't know if, do we have weymouth out there if we do put it up i, I, I was reading weymouth about this and but I, here's something you want to understand it says but will with the temptation make a way of escape so that you may be able to bear it now notice, all right, okay. no temptation, listen to this, I love this. No temptation has you in its power, but such as is common to human nature. And God is faithful and will allow you not to be tempted beyond your strength. But when the temptation comes, he also provides the way of escape so that you may be able to bear it. I, I just like the way that says that. Hallelujah. But notice here, he says if the temptation comes, he'll make a way of escape so you may be able to bear it. He didn't say put up, see, putting up with it is not bearing in Bible terms. That you have to just suffer with it. That's not, uh, He said when that temptation comes, you're going to find a way of escape. Bearing it is escaping from it. In other words, you can bear the weight of that temptation because you're able to escape from it because God provided a way out. There's always a way out. His divine protection will always be, uh, ensure and guarantee there's a way out of whatever temptation you're dealing with. You don't have to fail. You don't have to succumb to it. I just couldn't help myself. Yes, you can. I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, the devil had me. Nope, the devil didn't, listen, the devil's not that strong. Now, if you're running around telling everybody the devil's got you, he's that strong, but he's not that strong. 
You're serving God Almighty. God Almighty makes a way of escape. That means what you need to be doing when temptation comes, you start looking for the escape, not how to get away with it. Just be bobbleheads. Okay? <laughs> just bobblehead it. That's right, that's right, Pastor. Some folks think, oh, God, there's a temptation. I just couldn't help it. I had to fall for it. You know? You know you're not Flip Wilson or his alter ego, Geraldine. The devil made me do it, honey. The devil can't make you do anything. Do you understand that if the devil could make you do something, he would have made you not get saved? Hello? He would have made you curse God and die? Hello? He can't make you do things. As a born-again believer, he can't make you do anything. But you don't give him liberty and right to. So what do we do? We look to God. We trust the God who, said, who tells us that no temptation has you in its power. Ooh. I'm just bound by, you know, I'm bound by tobacco. I'm bound by alcohol. I'm bound by this. I'm bound. Now, the Bible says there's no temptation that has you in its power. That's a good confession, isn't it? If you're dealing with temptation, no temptation has me in its power. Glory to God. But such is common in human. See, every, in other words, all temptations, people deal with some type of temptation. Amen? But God is faithful. God's what? Faithful. See, God is faithful. God is faithful, and he will not allow you to be tempted above your, beyond your strength. There's, that's a good confession. So you just speak the word. Come into agreement with the word. Come in harmony with the word. And just say, no temptation has me in its power. Now it may be common to mankind, but it doesn't have me in its power. And God's faithful. He won't allow me to be tempted beyond my strength. That means I have strength to win this battle. That ought, to bring, that ought to bring relief to your soul, encouragement to your heart, and victory in your life. Because when that temptation came, God made a way out. There was an escape hatch. Have you ever, get, have you ever flown? Pull that thing off the seat back, and it says, you know, uh, here's how you get out the plane if it crashes. You know, if you're, if you're in a window seat, you reach up there, you do this, you pull the door out, you, uh, you, you, you throw the door out. Yeah, and then you get out and slide down the chutes. Or if you're on the wing, you get on top of the wing and then do whatever. If there's a water landing, you get whatever. It tells you, all, it tells you everything you need to do to escape. There's an escape route. Amen? And God tells us that when temptation, his divine protection, when temptation comes, there is a protection in your life. Number one, it can't go beyond. In other words, it can't be something that you just you absolutely cannot handle and overcome. Satan can't bring anything in your life that you are not equipped to defeat. That's what it says. You know what it says? See, the devil tell you that the devil made you do it, and you couldn't help it, and you just didn't, you just wanted no way you could, it was just, it was more, it was, that temptation was bigger than you. But God says he, it can't be. Hallelujah. So what's that mean? Start looking for the escape hatch. Because there's a way out. He's made a way out. You're bearing up under that is your escape. Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? All right. Uh, next, you're, you're, you're protected from uh, persecution. 2 Timothy 3.11 says, no, well, let's, it was 2 Timothy 3. Let's look in 10 and 11. We better read all of it. Just, you kind of get lost in the middle there sometimes and, 2 Timothy 3. Paul writing in verse 9 says, But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, pure purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came into me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what, uh, what persecutions I endured, listen to this, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. And yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall suffer persecution, 
But what's, what's the good thing? He'll deliver you out of them all. See, when people are persecuting you, just know God's deliverance is on the way. His protection to keep you from being taken under by heat. They'll persecute you, but he'll, deli he'll, he'll, he'll deliver you. See, deliverance is part of, of his protection. Amen. You know, if you're under my protection and something happens, I come in and I'll deliver you. Amen. Something's going wrong, I'll come in and deliver you if you're under my protection. Amen. My children, uh, when they were younger, they were under my protection. Somebody messed with them, I would come in and deliver them. And, and, and my first thought of how I was going to deliver them was I was going to take out the person messing with them. Amen. You're going to protect your kids. Are you here? I remember one time somebody, had, when Shannon was in high school, or, or maybe freshman or something, somebody started a rumor about her. This boy started this rumor. And I got a phone call. My daughter was upset. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm a grown man, but I'm ready to go take some kid out. You mess with my baby. And I called the principal because I'm telling you, I'm, I'm hot. I, I'm, I'm, I'm steaming. I'm, ready to, I'm getting ready to come down there and deliver her. And the way I'm going to deliver her is I'm going to take him out and let the whole school find out that you don't mess with my kid. And the principal calmed me down because I mean, uh, we got in his office and he, tried, he, he, he knew I was, I'm like, point him out. Who is he? I want him, I'm going to take him out. You might go to jail. I'm like, I'll go to jail. One, 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 pe one person we knew one time, their, their, this kid kept messing with their daughter, calling them up, calling them up, calling them up. And, and, and they, they, you know, he called them and, and he said, you tell them to leave you alone. And, they, and he kept calling this girl up. And finally he called one day. He, he, he told the wife and the girls, get in the car. Drove down to where this kid worked. Got out, went in, said, you outside now. He walked outside from where he was working. He grabbed him and threw him up against the wall. He said, I'll go to prison to keep creeps like you away from my daughter. See, his divine protection and deliverance were working hand in hand. He was getting ready to deliver his daughter and take that boy out. And that boy never called her again. <laughs> Amen. Most people are scared to do stuff like that now because, you know, somebody will sue them or whatever. Hey, that's all right. I'll go to, you know, like he said, I'll go to prison. <laughs> keep my daughters away. Keep somebody like you away from my daughters. God will come to your defense. Part of his divine protection is that when you're being messed with, he'll deliver you out of it. Amen? And when people begin to persecute you, listen, don't you know uh, Paul on the Damascus, well, he was Saul at that time, he was on the Damascus Road, the Bible says, and Saul yet breathing out threatenings, having letters, remember he had letters from Jerusalem to go find those people in the way and bring them down to Jerusalem. And on that Damascus Road, he saw, they, they ran into a light brighter than the noonday sun. Paul fell to the earth and heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Saul said, who art thou, Lord? I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Now, I always like to say this, because this is really what it was. This was a get saved to go to hell or go to hell now event. Jesus came to stop Saul from persecuting the church. Now, if Saul got saved in the process, great. Otherwise, he was going to hell. He was going to get taken out. He was not going to be the same man when he got up one way or the other. Actually, he wouldn't have gotten up the other way. Amen. Jesus, will. See, he didn't put up that persecution stuff. Amen. They were persecuting the church. And he said, that's enough. Just know that same Lord's on your side. People are persecuting you. People are messing with you. People are slapping. Oh, you Christians are all, I mean, you know, you, are, you Christians are anti, you're, you're homophobes. You're, you're hateful. You're full of hate. That's just the line. The devils are liars. They accuse you of being full of hate because you speak the truth. Have you ever seen the people who call you haters and hate mongers? The vile and the venom they spew out. Are you here? I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll mock uh, any church icon or whatever. They, they, they talk filthy. They, they, call, they, they call you all kinds of names, use foul language, and you're the one full of hate. That's just devils. They're persecuting the church. Why? They want the church to stop doing what it's supposed to be doing. They speak the truth. Now, you keep speaking the truth. God will, you trust God. God will protect you. I say God will protect you. You don't worry about that. You just keep speaking the truth. In love, of course, but you keep speaking the truth. You don't quit speaking the truth just because somebody full of the devil accuses you of being full of hate. No, you keep speaking the truth. Say amen. Uh, he'll keep you from, uh, he'll protect you from your enemies. 
Isaiah 59, 19 says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now, you know what? You, I mean, you can have enemies. You can have people who hate you just because you're a Christian. Now, what people want to do is that they'll try to make you fit the form of you keep your religion in your church and keep it out of my face. Hello. Now, they can run around and spew out anything they want to spew out. We, we, Jamie and I went to lunch the other day, and uh, <clears throat> I'm telling you, you ever been, have you ever eaten the Japanese steakhouse? You know, you go and you have to sit down with a bunch of people you don't know. And uh, normally we, we end up, if you go at lunch, you don't end up with a big table, and we ended up with a big table. And then there's this woman there that, uh, with five, four other women. And I'm t I've never been so ready to get out of a restaurant in my life. I mean, this woman talked just as so she could hear herself. But she was talking about how she didn't, she agreed to disagree with her pastor because she didn't, they, you know, she didn't have to listen to her opinion about Scripture or anything. And I'm just sitting over there, I'm chomping at the bits. I'm, you know, I'm like, you know, you start, you start twitching, you know, like uh, um, Chief Inspector Dreyfus in the Pink Panther movies. You know, you start, you start having twitches. You know, you're wanting to get up and just rebuke the daylights out of you. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. I just, I, I'm going to shut up. You know, number one, she wouldn't have received it, you know, because she thought she knew everything about everything, you know. One minute talking about going to church, the next two minutes talking about drinking, and the next word was cussing. You're thinking, dear Lord Jesus, you know. You know, uh, <laughs> in the multitude of words, it wants us not sin. And, and why don't you just do everybody a favor, keep your mouth shut, and let us, don't let us all know that you're a fool. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And they keep, they keep opening their mouth, and they keep revealing how much of a fool they are. Oh, my, 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 my. But you know, um, you can have enemies, and their enemies, their enemies will, will, will be vicious towards you. They'll, 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 they'll hate you for no cause and no reason. They just, they'll, just be, they'll be your enemy. But God will keep you, and God will justify you, and God will exalt you. Amen? Hallelujah. And, when they, and if they come to do you harm, he'll lift up a standard against them. Amen. I said amen. I was, you know, I was a minister to a friend recently, and they've, they've got a situation going on in life where um, I, I can't say much, but, you know, there's, there's a person in their life that's just venomous toward them. And they can't, you know, because, of, because of the situation, they just can't, they can't walk away from it, you know, because of, of what's going on. But uh, they're just venomous. So we prayed. We just, it just happened the other day. We just prayed. I said, Lord, we command the spirit operating in so-and-so that's persecuting and coming against your servant to cease and desist in their operations. It's a devil. They're motivated by the devil. They're full of the devil. Being operated and motivated by the devil. And I believe God delivers him from his enemies. <clears throat> they want evil and harm to come to him. But only goodness and mercy. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow thee all the days of thy life. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Somebody said one time, I got three angels following me around. Yeah, what's their name? Shirley? Goodness and mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I almost work on a Friday. Joke one at Dick. <laughs> How many get Dick's Friday jokes? <coughs> I didn't mean get to understand them. I meant get them. <clears throat> they get mailed to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're, they're pretty corny with a K. But I, I, I always get a kick out of them. So don't quit sending them. I enjoy them. Uh, God will keep you from falling. Oh, hallelujah. Jude 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And it's to the present. Uh, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now, you may have felt like you fell. You may have, but Paul said, I've, I've been knocked down, but I've not been knocked out. Are you here? Knocked down, but not knocked out. That's, that's a different translation than King James. But knocked down, but not knocked out. God's able to keep you from falling. Didn't, didn't, didn't uh, Satan try to quote to Jesus, the angels shall bear thee up, lest I dash a foot against a stone? Well, God will keep you from falling. Thank God. 
You may be half an inch from the ground, but God will catch you. Hallelujah. You feel like you landed right in, in, in cotton. Hallelujah. Now, or on a, on a uh, sheet of tobacco. We used to get up on the back sheets in the, in the mornings at the barn waiting for the, uh, go, to go into the fields and climb up on those, especially when it was raining. And you get everybody goes back to sleep, just laying on the big burlap things full of tobacco. Anybody ever done that? Joe's done it. All right. Go to the barn, be raining, get it, just get it climb up on a oh, sheet of tobacco and go to sleep. Hallelujah. I say she, because it's a big burlap bag that's wrapped around the tobacco to hold it in place to take it to market. Hallelujah. Pastor, I can't believe you talked about tobacco in church. That's of the devil. I just tell you what I did. God can keep, uh, next God will keep you from danger. Psalm 91, we're over in Psalm 91 now. Verse 3, surely he will deliver thee from the snow and the fowler, snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not, listen, you thou shalt not be afraid of the air, uh, uh, terror by night, nor by the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Thousands shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Now, I love this. The noisome pestilence, you know what pestilence means? Animal diseases. You know what anthrax is? It's an animal disease. Remember the anthrax scares we had a few years ago? Everybody, you know, people mailing anthrax? God's word says, hallelujah, that he'll protect you from anthrax. That's what he said. He, it, he'll deliver you from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. The animal diseases won't get on you. I mean, how many, how many for every year? Bird flu, swine flu, pig flu. You know, chicken flu. Flu, you know, every kind. I mean, I'm not waiting for them to come up with rabbit flu. You know, every time, you know, how many, how many, you know, for the past, since Bush was president, they've been talking about bird flu coming and being a, 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 what they call a pandemic all over the world. Now, they've had a few cases, but it hadn't been a pandemic. And we don't need to be scared of animal diseases anyway. God will deliver us from noise and pestilence, from animal diseases. Hallelujah. So if it's in the swine, it ain't getting in me. Amen. I'm this, I'm, I trust his protection. He'll deliver me from that. They're not going to get near me. And the fowler, the noisome pestilence, he's going to cover me with feathers. Under his wings I'll trust. Uh, his truth shall be my shield and buckler. I'm not going to be afraid by the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. If a thousand fall at one side and ten thousand in my right hand, it will not come nigh me. Now, I just got this. I'm going to tell you. See, now, how many remember growing up? We're, we're, most of y'all are, are, are at least somewhat close to that generation that when you were in school, they put that little, you know, radiology, uh, nuclear warning sign on your building. It was, a, it, was a, it was an atomic bomb fallout shelter. We saw films up putting our heads under our desk. How many remember that? All right. You go down by the fire station. They had that little symbol on the outside the fire station. Unless they are lead-lined bunkers, reinforced concrete, underground, you're toast. Unless, unless God is your refuge. He said a thousand fall on one side and ten thousand on the other, but it's not going to come nigh you. Man, God saying you can survive a nuclear explosion and, and live and not be touched by it. But you've got to get in faith. You've got to believe that. We, we were taught all our life to be afraid. You know, that we're going to have a nuclear holocaust. People used to teach the book that Armageddon was going to be Russia and America firing all the nuclear bombs and causing a meltdown on the whole earth. We, used to have, we had it all figured out. You probably have some of those tape series. You know, hello? We just got to get back in faith about stuff. Glory to God. So God will deliver us from dangerous calamities psalm 57 1 be merciful unto me O god O god be merciful unto me for my soul trust is in you in in the shadow of thy wings will i make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed hallelujah we can face all kinds of things and god will protect us god will deliver us can you say amen god does not uh, um God not only has provided protection for you, he's the one doing the protecting. Hallelujah. Amen? 
I mean, if he's our protector, we can just join Paul in Romans 8, 31 and say, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Can you say amen? I said, if God be for us, who can be against us? I said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? Well, not Satan. Not his bunch. I always remember this. There's more to be for us than be with them. Amen? Psalm, I mean, not Psalm. Um, 2 Kings 6, verse 14. Therefore he sent thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night. Now remember, now remember um, Israel kept defeating an enemy, and the king finally said, who's the spy? And they said, nobody's a spy. They got a prophet over there. And you come in here, and you, you do all your strategies in your secret chamber, and the prophet goes and tells them what you said. Thank God. And so we, he, he thinks, now, here's how dumb humans can be. The guys over there, knowing what you're saying in private, and you're going to go take him out. That's how dumb people can be. So he sends a bunch of chariots and horses over there. And, uh, you know, and, and so they came by night. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and the host can pass both of the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said unto him, Alas, master, how shall we do? Let me put that in um, modern-day English. Boss, we in trouble! Amen. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and beheld the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. Round about Elisha. Hallelujah. I got a friend. Pastors, he actually still over Winston-Salem. Uh, Fawaz Fanick. Fawaz went by Frank for a long time because, you know, uh, we, he was a crazier Jordanian. But he, he got born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, loves Jesus. But he knew people who fought in the Six-Day War against Israel. Jordanians who went and helped with the war to try to kill the Israelis. And they, they, they told him. As a young kid, they, they, these guys told him, said, yeah, we came over on the top of the dunes and there were millions of soldiers waiting for us. I mean, Israel didn't have millions of soldiers. But the angels showed up. Why? Because God still has a covenant with natural Israel just like he has a covenant with spiritual Israel. He'll graft in natural Israel back into the olive branch. Remember that? Olive tree. If, if the wild branch can be grafted in, how much shall the natural branch be grafted back in? Israel's coming back into the fold. Glory to God. God has a natural covenant with Abraham. He has a spiritual covenant. He has a natural covenant. And because of his natural covenant, he protected them from their calamities. And when they all moved in with their tanks and all their stuff, here come the angels of God. <laughs> and they lost. I said they lost. Y'all hear you going home. They lost. Israel established the borders and everything else. They, 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 they got all the stuff they needed to get because the angels of God were with them. And when they came down to him, Elijah prayed to the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. They didn't know what to do. I said, they, they were all befuddled and didn't know where to go and what to do because they got smoked with blindness. Hallelujah. God is your protector. God is your deliverer. God is your answer. And whatever you're facing, evil, temptation, persecution, calamities, enemies, whatever it is, God will deliver you. God will protect you and keep you. He'll uphold you. And remember this, he that will not ever go to sleep. He that keepeth Israel never this, neither slumbers nor sleeps. Can you say amen? Hallelujah.